the check because this check is based on knee brackets and knee brackets are objects that are very easy to compute, right? So instead of going on some NVIDIAs, now I'm doing just differentiation uh, and substitution and get, getting this guy, okay? So uh, Herman extended this to the case of a singular distribution, but like I said, it's not very useful in, in applications in the sense it, it has very strong theoretical value. But the check is not in terms of relativity, the check in terms of invariance with respect to flows. So I need to compute flows, which means I need to solve the differential equations, ODEs. It has very strong theoretical value, but for us here in terms of applications, it will not be that practical. But uh, Nagano, 1966, he extended a little bit saying that when we can replace regular C infinity by analytic. If it's an analytic distribution, then it's also integrable if and only if in volume. These are the results that we are we know about Frobenius theory. It's based on it's it's for integrability of PDEs, but it has this very geometrical meaning. We'll come back to it again in a very different setting, and I hope that you Remember it or have you know have this geometric flavor in your mind. Any question about that? About the geometric meaning of Frobenius theorem, how to apply the theorem or whatever. Any anything about Frobenius? Uh -huh. One obvious application is for the non-holonomic constraints, which I will not explain here. It's in the lecture in detail and you will be required to you know to do it. So it will be in the homework. Okay. Uh, so Nagano replaced the regular C infinity with analytic. Is that it doesn't look like a generalization? It's like more of a. Um, yeah, he showed that if it's analytic, then you get you get regular actually. You get the, the regularity for free. So he showed that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 a theorem, right? I mean, if you if you get if you're analytic, then you get the regularity. So. Uh, Let's ponder a little bit on, on this guy, on this Frobenius. So actually, the proof of Frobenius, you know, it's if and only if. Typically, or not typically, usually in mathematics, when you prove an if and only if condition, one way is easy and the other is hard. So I'll prove, I'll prove the easy one for you. So the easy one is the necessity. So uh, involutivity is a necessary condition for integrability. So uh, this is the, this way. I will prove this way, which is the necessity. I mean, integrable implies involutive. So involutive is a necessary condition. If it's not involutive, then it's not integral. Okay? Involutive is a necessary condition, and you can think of it why. Think about it for a minute. We already know that Lie brackets generates velocities, right? And when generating velocities, it may generate new velocities. So if the distribution is involutive, means what? It means that the Lie brackets are not new. The Lie brackets are in the distribution. So the Lie brackets cannot generate new velocities. So if the Lie brackets are generating new velocities, so it's not involutive. For sure, it's not integral because I'm generating new velocities. I will leave that surface if there was a surface. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, it makes sense that involutivity is a necessary condition, and we can prove it very easily because here is integrable means what? There is a function. Yes, exactly. So delta is integrable. No, delta. Say, let's give it some. Let us say is the span of v1 up to vk, and these guys, let's give them a rank, like rank d or something, okay? Is integrable, right? We're trying to prove this statement, so I'm given that it's integrable and I want to reach here. So, uh, delta is integrable, meaning there exists lambda 1 up to lambda. If this guy is a subset of tangent space of that, um, sorry, vector fields on that manifold which is in the dimension, how many lambdas do I have here? Can you? Uh, Just, um, n minus k. Yeah, 
minus n minus d. The oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, just Allow some little bit of generality. Okay, these lambdas map the manifold to the real line, right? They are just scalar functions. And uh, because it's integral, then the lead derivative of any function of these guys along any vector is just zero for all i in the collection and j in the other collection. Any question about that? So now let's uh, please give me V and W in delta and lambda in this collection. Any two vector fields and some lambda. The Lie derivative of lambda along the Lie bracket is, by definition of the Lie bracket, is LV LW lambda minus LW LV lambda, right? And again, because it's integral, it means that this guy is zero, this guy is zero, which means that the result is zero, which means what? This is zero for all lambda in the collection. Right? So it means that the lead bracket is really also in the tangent space. So the lead bracket is in the so uh, you start with any two vector fields in delta, you get the lead brackets in delta, so delta is involutive. So I started with integrable, I got the involutive. So this is the going forward direction. The backward direction is a little bit more involved. It's not, it's not very hard, but it's, it's a little bit more involved. We'll take like a lecture or so. So uh, one of the best sources for it is actually SAS3 for the sufficiency for the sufficiency, okay? So if you want to look at it in detail, and actually the proof is constructive in the sense he proves it by getting these lambdas, constructing these lambdas. It's not just like a, an existence proof. No, it's, it's actually constructive. They construct lambdas. They show you one means of constructing lambdas, okay? Sastra is one of them. I mean, the proof is everywhere, but Sometimes people write it in a hard way. Sastri is very clear in this sense. Any question about that? Okay, so we got the involutivity. Necessary condition, which is... Yeah, look at this. If the Lie brackets, if the Lie brackets are not generating new vectors... If the Lie brackets are generating new vectors, the Lie brackets are generating new vectors, so I'm done. I cannot integrate, and I will I will not live in that surface. Okay. But look at it from the other perspective. If the Lie brackets are not generating, okay. So luckily, the Lie brackets are not generating new vectors. There is a hope that I will have a surface, and I will never leave that surface. At least the Lie brackets is not providing me a way to leave the surface. But maybe I can generate velocities by other means. Why are you saying that the Lie brackets are the only way to generate new vectors, right? Mm -hmm. The point is that I have two vectors, V and W, or V1 and V2. And I'm asking, do these guys just live in a two-dimensional slice and never live to the outer space, right? This is the question. And the question, this question is related to the following question. Okay, can you, with these two vectors, generate new vectors that get you to the outer space, right? Well, the Lie brackets is one way, and if the Lie brackets check fails, so the Lie brackets do not provide you a new way, so the distribution is involutive, then there is a hope that you will live in that surface, and this is your goal. But why are you saying that the Lie brackets is everything? If the Lie brackets don't provide you new directions, then for sure you will be on, on a slice. This is if and only if, right? So the, 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 the second part is not that clear, right? Do the re do Lie brackets really represent all of our abilities, all of our uh, achievable velocities? This is a question that you want to answer. Okay. Obviously, it's yes here, at least for all these cases. But uh, I will touch a little bit upon this fact. Any questions so far? So to do that, this actually has to do with uh, another theorem that is not famous in differential geometry. It's hard to find it in books in differential geometry. Uh, Roshevsky 
1938 and independently by Cho, 1939, it's called the Orbit Theorem for Distributions. So let's see what do you mean. We need just a little bit of language, just two definitions. So given a family of vector fields, F, and this obviously was not in the lecture. Family F of vector fields V1 up to Vk. Okay? This is a subset of the vector fields on M. And given some point, say x0 in M, I have two definitions here. I'll define diff of F is this set. This flows along these vector fields, phi1, phi along v1 by time t1 composed with phi t2 v2 and so and so phi tk vk the, these guys are maps so if you evaluate it at a point you will get a new point right they, they map points on m to other points on m by flowing along these vector fields each one for some time concatenate the way you like the order doesn't matter such that T1 to Tk, they are reals, and this is a very big issue. This creates the whole dilemma of nonlinear controversy. We'll talk about it later. But the point is, this is real. It's not positive. It's just